Hey everyone, Tim here from Snap Attack. Let's dig into the latest threat snapshot. So it's November patch Tuesday, and there's three vulnerabilities that CISA has added to the known exploited vulnerabilities catalog from here. We're going to dive into one of these that's actively exploited and a little bit more interesting, and this is CVE 2023-36025. This is a Windows smart screen uh, bypass. So Smart screen, as you may know, if you have that enabled, um, it's going to be that annoying pop-up when you downloaded something from the internet and it's saying, whoa there, are you sure you want to execute that? Um, really good uh, security mechanism. Again, this is using the behind the scenes, the mark of the web to say that, hey, this file was downloaded from the internet and might not be safe. You know, make sure that you trust this. So this bypass is definitely critical to organizations that rely on that security mechanism. Um, let's go ahead over to Snap Attack, talk through this vulnerability here a little bit. So this is the um, page discussing and disclosing this vulnerability. Um, again, this is powered by our partner Mandiant. Uh, you can see it, this is an 8.8 .8 CVSS score, um, first published with Patch Tuesday and disclosed. Right now, I'm not defended against this, but I do have a hunt available and you know recommended. Um, this is something that is, you know, confirmed to be exploited. Uh, it was exploited as a zero day and it is exploited in the wild. And again, what we're able to do is craft a malicious link, basically a .url file um, that's going to be able to bypass smart screens. So there are some POCs available um, with full disclosure. They're not great. They are going to take a little bit of, you know, working to, you know, finagling to get working here. We have an example threat here in our threat library that we just recently put up there based on this, and we'll take a look at it. Um, what these all are generally relying on is, um, again, we're going to create this malicious URL. It's going to have a zip file with a, a VB script. Um, Again, basically, you can obfuscate, put whatever payload you want in there. In this case, we have a VB script reverse shell that's going to, you know, connect back out and um, allow us access. So we can take a look. We can see what this attack looks like. Um, we've got our, our Windows victim here, um, smart screen enabled, and then we have the um, Linux attacker. So you can see here we've got this uh, URL that we're downloading, very uncleverly named cve.url. We're going to go ahead, double click, open that up. That's going to trigger this. Um, you're going to see some stuff going on in the background. You'll also see that CMD window pop up. So you know we've been compromised at this point. Um, again, if I were a little bit stealthier here, probably would you know have this link to some sort of legitimate URL that would open up in your browser too. So you would think that everything was fine. Um, we can hop on over to the Linux side. Um, we can see, you know, a little bit later here, we've got code execution. Um, you know, did a directory list, ran who am I. Um, per the usual, these sort of activities, again, they light up on process graphs. So, you know, when we're opening up that, um, that file, that link, what we're seeing is um, Explorer launching W script with that VBS, and then we're seeing our commands. So running who am I, you know, running directory list. Um, very easy to detect this sort of activity and behavior. So probably should uh, pivot over. So how do we, you know, detect, how do we hunt for this sort of attack? Um, some good evergreen detections here. Again, this is still relying on a lot of kind of living off the land internal tools. So um, something like this where I'm looking for, you know, VB script, JavaScript, you know, WSF files being executed by C script, W script. Um, Again, we can see it's been used by BlackBite, Ransomware, Evil Corp, other sort of, you know, threats. Um, this is a good kind of evergreen behavior. This is something that's in the Sigma, Sigma community rules. You can definitely check that out. Uh, if you wanted to have something a little bit more tuned, um, the suspicious URL file is, again, looking for the creation of URLs in an unusual location. Um, so this is a file creation. Uh, and we can see here, again, this is Chrome downloading that URL file. So um, again, if that's not something that your you know, organization sees a lot, this could be a good hunt rule. Um, something a little bit more precise, again, because we're talking about files downloaded from the internet, mark of the web, um, this is a, a little bit more tailored one. Um, this is using Sysmon's um, event code 15, which is again, one of those that I have to look up. 
uh, from time to time. You can see here what that uh, is um, looking for. So it's looking at the contents of that link and you can expect that. Um, we see that URL and that ID list parameters. So that's what this detection is honing in on. Great if you're using Sysmon, not great if you're using some other tools. Um, a lot of other EDRs don't pick this up. This is a little bit more uh, unique to Sysmon. So this is the file create stream hash. So um, basically when a file stream is created, again, you can see that information. So, um, you know, example of this is that zone identifier for Mark of the Web for those downloaded files. So. If you're, you know, EDR, you have telemetry around this through Sysmon, this could be a, a little bit more high fidelity detection, again, because we're looking at specifically those URLs downloaded from the internet, and that does help us reduce some of those false positives and, you know, tune that detection. So just another, you know, detection opportunity that you have in your arsenal. So that's our coverage on the smart screen bypass uh, for this snapshot. Uh, this is an ongoing series, so like, subscribe, and we'll see you next time.